All right, how's everybody doing today? Uh, today is March 20th, 2023. I hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day weekend. I actually got to get out of the house and wear some green and drink some green beer um, with a, a good friend of mine that was visiting Phoenix, Arizona. So it was a lovely weekend for me. Um, so I hope all of you had a good, I hope it was a lucky St. Patrick's Day weekend. Um, this is our general mentorship session. This is a session where you can bring in any question that you might be dealing with in the notary industry. Um, you can bring it uh, in front of everybody. It's a very safe place to uh, bring questions to. But today, I actually wanted to start off this session with kind of like a micro topic, and it might be something that, you, um, that you've dealt with or you might be dealing with as a notary uh, signing agent. This is actually... Uh, there's actually kind of a lot of this happening right now in the notary industry, and I would just want to make sure that you guys are prepared to know how to handle things. Um, so I wanted to bring this up. If you have brought questions today specifically outside of this topic, please go ahead and uh, get your hand virtually raised so we can get you into queue. I'm going to go over this as fast as possible. I do know that this topic may be a little sensitive uh, to some of you, and that's okay. Sorry, I'm turning off all my uh, sounds on phones here. Um, and it may bring some questions for you. Uh, but if you brought something that you wanted to uh, bring to the session today, please go ahead and virtually raise that hand so when, when we can, we can get to it. Um, today, I wanna have a micro topic about are they slow to pay or are they not paying you, okay? And I have a blog article coming out about this and I really want to just go over this really quickly and I hope that you'll read the blog. If you're watching the replay, um, it will be, uh, attached to the replay and it will be posted by end of day today. I'll also put it in our Facebook group. So if you're not in our Facebook group, please make sure to go by there and join. We always post when we have a new blog article coming out. But let's talk about slow to pay signing agencies and no pay signing agencies. Um, I have to say it this way because I know that uh, that some people will get it and some people won't and i don't want anybody to think i'm speaking down but let's talk about slow to pay signing agencies i see a lot of complaints about slow to pay signing agencies online um, my own company has even been you know said slow to pay and the way that i feel about that is is if you don't want slow to pay go get your own business um, one thing that a lot of notaries don't understand about why signing agencies may be paying you know, less than two weeks or three weeks. So I wanna explain that so that, you, so that you understand. The first thing that you need to know is that for a lot of my clients, they don't put in 20, 30, 40, 50 orders. They put in hundreds of orders. So we invoice them from the first to the 30th. And if you take a file on the 30th and we invoice them for the entire month on the 30th, then we give them 15 days to pay and then we still have to process payments and get those payments out. Larger companies, if you were working for themselves, are not gonna pay you per file and they're not gonna pay you every two weeks. If you want to be paid every two weeks, a, a really large company like Amrock has a billion dollars to play with. They can put all these payment things in process and, and pay. One of the reasons that Unlimited Inc, we have 45 to 60 day payments is for this reason. And then we also have a uh, uh, um, a, a thing. So if we are paid within the 30 days, we still hold it for 45 days. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of times, and you guys go over this in training, a lot of times a signing, uh, a, a lender will need to review the file and they'll come back with an error. And we learned very early on that if the file is closed, the notary will not go back, even if they did something wrong, unless they're paid more money, which we can't bill the client for corrections. So these are a couple of the reasons. There's probably more reasons for signing agencies that pay at their own terms. You're a business owner, so if you want to have clients that pay you quickly, then you can go out, and I encourage you to go out. There's enough business out there for everyone. And to me, honestly, after a certain amount of time, you know, there are going to be uh, some of you that only want to work for signing agencies. You don't want to go direct. But a lot of you that have that itch, you probably really want to push yourself to go and get some direct clients, if anything, to mix in with signing agencies. OK, so I have to say it that way. Now, another thing that I want to tell you about is the, the, the not paying signing agencies. Right. We've just covered slow to pay. Now I'm going to cover not paying. One of the biggest mistakes as a signing agent you can make 
when you are um, when you are complaining is to not read your agreements with the contracting companies that you are working with. Um, one second, guys. I'm going to close this window because there's an airplane. I apologize. I should have closed it before we started. So one of the biggest things that I'm writing about in this blog article is that before you can begin a complaint, if they're slow to pay or if they're not paying at all, which not paying at all is where you can really have a complaint, you need to know your agreements. Now, I know signing order actually puts all of the payment terms right up at the top of the order um, for you to see it. When you create a new client account in your notary assist or your QuickBooks or notary gadget, you really need to be logging what that company's payment terms are. If you go and complain to anyone, okay, anybody that you weren't paid in, a, in the time that you want and that company's within their payment terms, there's nothing you can do. Any review you give them will be removed and any client that they have will discard it because they're simply going to show their contract. Larger companies have contracts with how they're doing things. So you have to know those payment terms. Now, when someone's outside of those payment terms, and in my blog, I say, you know, if they say 45 days, add another seven days on that because they can mail a check to you on that 45th day. Okay, they can send a sale, snail mail, and as long as they have proof that they cut that check and they mailed it, then you've you've got you know something to work with. Now Let's talk about what happens if you don't get paid. You're outside of those payment terms. Let's say that their payment terms are 45, then you've given it that seven days. The first thing that you do is you start with a polite demand letter. Hi there, I made a close. Uh, I, I closed this transaction for you. Um, I'm, I'm quite certain that your payment terms are, you know, 45 days. I've given you an additional seven days before reaching out. I'd like to check the status of my payment. If you get communication, hey, we're having payment issues, that's actually a good sign if they're communicating back with you, okay? You don't wanna be belligerent, you don't want to go, you've already got your record that you need that you made a demand letter, okay? You don't even have to say demand. A demand letter can actually be polite, you know, especially if you know and you wanna have a good relationship. You can even say in that letter, I'd like to have a great relationship with you. I just noticed this is outside of payment terms. I'd like to be as compliant as possible. Can I just get a status update? They might write you back and say, well, your W-9 is not up to date, which is a responsibility of you as a signing agent. We, I have got a whole article on that as well. Or they might say, hey, we mailed the check. You didn't get it. Let me get it to you. Or they may come back and say, we're having payment problems. If they come back and say they're having payment problems, you have two choices. You can decide that you will work with them. Okay, I understand you're having payment problems. I can extend another 30 days. Can you guarantee to pay within 30 days? Right now in the industry, and I'm gonna use this, um, we've all seen Mobile Notary Zone. It's a big company out there. And honestly, my heart went out to him. One of his clients went bankrupt. He sent out this mass email to all of the notaries and said, I can't pay you, but here's my direct cell phone. I will pay you. I actually personally called him myself and said, my heart goes out to you. Let me know if you need anything. He never asked for anything, but I was like, I, I would hate for that to happen to Unlimited Inc. We actually updated our agreements at Unlimited Inc. because of what happened to him. We now put a clause that if one of our clients goes bankrupt or out of business and we can't get paid, that we won't be able to pass along those payments. And as long as we can prove that that company went bankrupt, that will be our stance. Um, so we, we learned that. Um, so if they're working with you, then you can give them new payment terms, okay? But if they're not working with you, you've sent a demand letter, you don't get response. Now let's talk about what you can do in order to obtain payment. First of all, you got to know who you can complain to. So you've reached out to the company. It is signing agency standard that you do not contact your title companies through a signing agency. That is from the NNA. We all learned that signing agent 101. However, you can reach out to title and you can say professionally. Hi there, I did a closing for this signing agency. I've not been able to reach them. I'm outside of my payment terms. All I want to know is if they were paid for the signing. I am not, and you can put in there, I'm not requesting for you to pay me. 
but I am requesting to know if they were paid for the signing. This is your second piece of leverage, okay? They, if they cut a check to that signing service, they will most likely never pay you because title and escrow is not going to write a check because they already paid the person they contracted, which is the signing service to pay you. So you now have your second piece of evidence there, okay? You don't tell title that you need to pay. You don't complain to them. All you want to know is were they paid for this closing, okay? So adding it up here, they have to be outside of their payment terms for you to even take that route. So please be professional, be patient, and wait until they're outside of their payment terms, okay? Then reach out to the company that actually hired you. If you do not get a response, if they're working with you, no need for you to contact title. If, if only you're not getting a response, then you would be able to reach out to the title company and say, were they paid for this signing, okay? This is proper etiquette, and this is going to make you look so professional and help you build your case in order to get paid for that signing. Okay, now the next thing is, is you can send another demand letter like after you've talked to the title company. I have uh, you know, received notification that you've been paid. I'd like you to remit payment. There's a couple of things that you can do at this point. I see notaries all the time go out and post on Google Business or, or Yelp or whatever that says, this company didn't pay me. But guess what? Go back a year later and see if that's there. Because once you say you worked with a company, your review is null and void. Google, Yelp, Better Business Bureau, all of it will remove it because you're not a customer of that company, okay? And all they have to do is pick up the phone or report it. So you're never going to get anywhere complaining in those areas. And I say that with love and it might be frustrating, but let me tell you, you do have a voice and there are places where you can actually vocalize. And this is really important that signing agents understand this. Sites like the good, the bad, the ugly, I know that you love them and help you avoid getting in, in, in those. Um, Notary Stars also has a review of signing agencies. We have a blacklist of black uh, companies, a list of blacklisted companies that notaries should avoid is for all of our members. Um, those, those types of resources, those are great, but then going and complaining to the same people that it's happening to isn't going to get you far. What can help get you far is if you understand the power of your state's attorney general, okay? Your state's attorney general is to, to, and I'm gonna use this as an example. There is a signing agency here in Arizona. The guy opened up a company and didn't put, uh, didn't pay any of the notaries. Then he closed that company and opened a brand new company. Didn't pay any of those notaries either. And I guarantee you this guy is gonna open up a third one and not pay any notaries there either. And it's funny because his family also owns a signing agency. So how they're letting this happen, I don't know. But it's very easy for them, for, for people who have intentional, and I do believe that that, por that portion might be intentional, but notaries can complain and complain and complain. You can comp complain on Notary Cafe all day long, but that's not, nobody's ever reported them to the attorney general, okay? When you become a company, you get something called an EIN. A lot of you have done it, and that's a mask for your social security number, okay? You need to let your attorney general know if there is a bad company out there that's performing bad business, taking money from one party, especially in real estate transactions that have to be paid and is part of a contract and is not upholding that contract. If the first company had been a, a reported in, in Arizona to the attorney general, then the second company may never have been able to be formulated. Okay. So you report it to your attorney general's office and maybe your complaint doesn't, but you go out and, and, and I want this to get out and please, when this video comes out, like, and share it and get it, the word out, read the blog article, share it with other notaries because we need to start using the attorney general's office. Now, again, you have to be outside of those payment terms, but that office can keep 
that company from formulating another business and doing it again and again. And the problem that I see with most bad signing agencies, those ones that are really malicious or trying to do this, is that there's no nobody who really knows how to go after them. Okay. Now here's another thing that you can do, and we're actually getting ready at Notary Stars to launch the first credit uh, collection agency for notaries. Okay. Now we're in the process of this. It's still under development. I'm putting together a contract with the company that's going to be the third party that does this. But here's something that we've learned. You, these companies that open and close and all those things, they have owners. And one of the things that you're going to have to do is be clever. Every single one of these owners probably started as a notary and has put up a W-9, which means we have access and we have a lot of power to go past that EIN number and look for their social security number because you're an EIN is truly just a mask for your social security number. Then they can actually go after them with their social security number to make sure that they go after their credit. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're going through the proper channels to number one, get your money back and then number two. Um, make sure it doesn't happen to you or anyone else again. Going out and complaining on the wrong forums, it's not going to stop. Now, you can put a, 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 a Google business review or a Yelp review, but if you're complaining about the, the company not actually paying you, then they're just going to remove it. If you complain to the attorney general's office, that's going to add up over time. And and maybe you go into these forums and instead of adding fuel to the fire on notary cafe or or any of these other sites consider tapping those notaries on the shoulder and say hey i found the attorney general's office for the state where this business is located i put my letter in i'd like to see you put your letter in too i'd like to see more notaries use that channel um, because i feel that a lot of the signing agencies that do those types of of things are are truly some of them intentionally do it i believe now we all know that notary go and uh, is is like, like some of them call it notary no <laughs> or those sorts of things because they pay slow but they have their payment policies and they got a lot of us started so you can't really hate them if they actually pay you because that's how they set up their business you as a business owner can set your business up and find your own clients and do things the way that you want to. Slow to pay is much different than no, no pay at all, okay? Sometimes it's just paying your dues, getting set up as a signing agent. And I encourage escrow officers in Arizona all the time. You may think that I want every single file, but I don't. I want your nationwide files. We just have a lot of escrow officers that also use us for local because they're really busy. But we have plenty of offices that have two or three notaries that they love. They use them regularly, locally. And then we get everything out of area and nationwide. And I would prefer that because then I don't have to worry about notaries. Did they return it on time? Or that's between the notary and the escrow officer. I love when notaries work direct. And all of you should be really striving for that direct business. Um, but I wanted to start this out today because I'm going to be publishing this article about slow to pay and no to pay, and there'll be more information about it. But I do think it's really important that we get the word out about exactly how to, to do things. I looked at a thread on this particular one in Notary Cafe, um, and I'm not kidding you. There were like 200 notaries throughout the country that have commented on this thread, and they're still doing it because the the complaints are not going to the right department, you know, and just to put it in perspective, and then I want to hear from you guys. If you, if you call the wrong department and you need help, they just transfer you to the next department. But if you call the wrong company, how are they going to help you? You know, how would you ever, you can go on Notary Cafe and all these complaint sites, but an attorney general's office is there to protect you. You are a constituent of the state. And if you're doing business with someone in that state. So that's where you really need to start. Miss Susan, um, I, I know that uh, 
you're actually the reason that sparked this conversation. So if you want to share something here, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, um, I really appreciate Ronnie. He helped me out over the weekend. I've been working for a company, um, worked for him for a year, year and a half. They paid on time, everything else. And then all of a sudden, last August, the breaks went on and I didn't get paid. So I actually have um, an attorney. I had sent them three or four demand letters. The first responses I got was, we're having problems with accounting, this, that, the other. And I was like, okay. And I accepted that. Well, this went on for three or four months. And then I sent him another letter. I spoke to him. And then my final conversation was, you need to talk to accounting. So when you get to their accounting department, they don't answer the phone and they say, please send us an email. And they give you the email address. And I'm like, well, I've already gone, gone through all of that. So I then turned it over to an attorney. Demand letters were sent from the attorney, nothing. So then I thought, okay, my next step is gonna to be to reach out to our fabulous mentor, Ronnie. <laughs> so I reached out to him and he told me, he said, report it to the attorney general. And I, Ronnie knows the company that I'm talking about. And he said, you know, that I was the first person that had brought it up. However, if you go into Notary Cafe, because that's where they initially got my information, it was put out there. So I put in um, my complaint yesterday to the Notary General. And then I went on Notary Cafe, urged other people to do it. And I think, I, I, do I need to share that website also, Ronnie, along with the link to it? If you, yeah, if you have a problem, um, did we name, did you name, do you, are you comfortable naming the company in the video? Yes, I, yeah, I am. It's um, notarized 24 seven. Yeah. And where, where are they located, Miss Susan? They are located in California. So you would need to file a complaint, which Miss Susan did with the state of California's uh, uh, attorney general's office. So that's, if you've been affected by that, that's who you would formulate it with, okay? And of course, it's a waiting game and a process, but I will tell you that the more complaints they receive, and you may get like a letter that says, we'll look into it, or they may say who you need to contact next, but that is where you really start is reporting that company, even if you're just putting it on record. Because I'll tell you, when they get five, six, seven letters, then it starts looking bad and then they can't formulate another company. The reason that these companies are not able, that they're easy to shut down and start and rebrand. Um, and you know, maybe I shouldn't be teaching this because I own a signing agency, but the reason- you know, There's a bunch of, I'm gonna jump in here, Ronnie. There's a bunch of people saying that they have outstanding from them. So if they're past the, the point, um, you know, get in contact with the attorney general. Yep. The, and here's the thing, once you get it into the attorney general's eyes, you know, you're, you're creating a case where they could go after this entity or put a freeze on their business or tell them that they can't operate in the state. If you're not able to get to their social security number, which a lot of signing agencies are LLCs or what have you, but I will tell you a single member LLC has no protection really uh in the eyes of the, the the government you file it as an individual with the irs so if something happens then it's really going to go on that person's social security number and most signing agencies are owned by one person not two people like unlimited inc so the ein stands a little bit stronger and we're actually converting to an escort so going to the attorney general is the very first place to start uh when when you're filing for a complaint those processes that I gave you, and there'll be in a whole article uh, about this, and I do want to leave time for any other questions that people may have um, today, because that's what general mentorship is about. But I really wanted to get this out because I know Miss Susan had a problem this weekend. It, it, it never fails about every month at Notary Stars, we get one notary that's really been, you know, something happened to them, you know, like they're, they didn't get paid or it's been six months or they were chasing payments. Um, and I want to make sure that we don't forget that part of the conversation. 
Uh, we have a couple of tools for you at Notary Stars. You know, our members, you have access to signing agency reviews. Um, you're able to create a new one. You're able to add to the conversation. You can change a company's, you know, rating in a minute with just a few clickups of a button. And you can also look for our blacklisted companies. This particular company will go on our internal blacklist for you guys. Um, and I, reg I encourage you to regularly add, add update that list there have been one or two companies that have been removed because they're doing better now there have been some that have been added so you want to make sure that you regularly go in and check i would say probably about once a quarter um we're not going to start posting things in the facebook group too much or those sorts of things we don't want to be we we put the information out there so you have access to it um so we're not going to like shove it down or send emails or be like watch out we have our scam reports as well, which you can watch out for, but we don't really call those scams. Use your other resources too, and get a feeling for the signing agencies. You know, 123 Notary has a forum, Notary Cafe has a forum on signing agencies. I think uh, Notary Rotary does. And then there's another site uh, called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. They have all kinds of, you know, information out there. You can decide where you pull from or a mix of all of them. But it all starts with knowing about that company and what their payment terms are. Now I want to tell you the repercussion of not understanding your payment terms. We have notaries that do a signing all over the country at Unlimited Inc. and within seven days expect to be paid. And when they reach out and they go, we want to be paid in seven days, and then they don't get their way, they stamp their feet, we just blacklist them. And a lot of those notaries don't really understand. You guys understand. You know, especially you that are here today and those of you that watch the replays and those of you that are just finding us, you are seeking information. You'd be surprised how many people are blindly trying to operate in this industry and have been for a long time. Your payment information, you really need to make sure you understand that your payment terms and every time you create a new client account, put those payment notes in there. I'm sure that Notary Assist and uh, notary gadget allows you to create client notes and that's really important for you it needs to be something that you do regularly where you put in your payment terms and notes um, on signing order you can go back to any order and it will actually show you the contract that you signed and your payment terms for the file that you did i'm not so sure that snap docs does that um, unless it's something new uh, that's that's been done um, and then in the future we are working diligently in the background on putting together a way for our members to be able to report to the credit bureau. One of the lucky things I think that will be good. Um, so some of these bad signing agencies, I have access to SnapDoc, ZigSig, and Signing Order, which they put up W9s. And a lot of times when they own a business, they also work as a signing agent. And so I've been able to pull a lot of the information um, that we need to go after some of these companies so that they can't continue to do these things. So I do need your help if we're gonna try to change something in the industry. Nothing's gonna happen overnight. I'm not gonna put up a web page and have an intake form and partner with this company and it's gonna change overnight. But I do believe that when we learn together how to actually combat you know, people who intentionally do this, now, one last thing, and by the way, guys, if you brought questions today or you have questions on this topic, please go ahead and raise those hands virtually because I would love to hear from you guys on this topic or any topic today. Um, but the last thing that I really want to say is you, and I want to say, make sure I say this, this properly, when you, when we make a change like this and we implement it together as an industry then we will send a message that you can't do this that we are strong business owners that we are smart business owners that we know how to protect ourselves we need to learn to use those words and those gripes and those finger strokes in a very professional positive way together so that this doesn't happen again and again. And I believe Melissa Etheridge has a really great uh, saying um, in one of her songs. She said, uh, refuse to hand it down 
and the legacy stops here. So for a long time, we as signing agents have just handed off to the next generation of signing agents, you know, that this can happen to you and that it's just a part of our industry. I no longer believe that to be true. And I actually believe that up until about six months ago, when I started working with this company and interviewing companies to go after and, 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 and put dings on credits for businesses or individuals so that they could stop doing this. Now I see a way for us to, to combat this. And if we come at it with a vengeance and a force together, we can stop this for the future generation of notaries of bad signing agencies. We will send a message that you can't come up in this house and do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, just, I want you guys to know we can do that together. Um, are, are you ready? Yes, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So what happens, what causes them to not, because I, I was associated, well, not associated, but it was notarized 247. They normally just kind of hit you in your, your email and say, hey, we have this signing. Can you do it? This is a price. Can you negotiate. What happens that causes them to not be able to pay? There could be a lot of things. And right now in this particular industry, that's why I did say we need to be a little patient if we're getting communication, like if they're actually communicating, um, like Mobile Notary Zone actually communicates and said, I will pay you. I just don't know when. That's a good enough answer. Now you can decide how you want to handle it, but I, my heart would go out. If they're avoiding the question or can't give you a date where they're going to pay you, I would say a couple of things could have passed, happened. One of their larger clients could have gone bankrupt and they don't have it in their agreement. Like Travis and I literally, please read the unlimited ink notary agreement. It says if any of our clients go bankrupt and we can prove it, no, we will not get paid, nor will you. But a lot of nobody understood that we were gonna have a downturn market like this. So some of the title companies could have gone bankrupt and they weren't protected or had any kind of business insurance. And you know, we're even looking in in things like that right now. Like we haven't found it yet. There's gotta be some kind of insurance that says if you're the people who are supposed to pay you, don't pay you, that you can file a claim. We're looking into that behind the scenes too. You know, as because as I get larger, the scarier it gets. You know, we're not a small signing agency anymore. We're we're not even middle ground anymore. <laughs> like we're big. And it the bigger you go, the scarier it gets. And so they might have lost a client or several clients you know uh, a bank could have closed i mean let's look at silicon valley recently you know we don't get to control those types of things there are there is a difference though in my mind if their clients go bankrupt and they come forth about that that's one thing right you can choose to be a business owner and an understanding business owner and say listen I'm going to let you slide, even if it's $1,500, let's just say that they owed you that. Um, I'm going to let you slide on that because you came to me and you told me, but when you get up and going and you've got money again, I'd like to be the first one you put back out in the field, you know, in my area, that would be a good business relationship. But if they're closing and opening and closing and opening companies, that's a different story. If they're hiding behind a company name and not saying who they really are, or even if they say who they are, and they're they're not uh, they're not being honest, then that's a whole nother story, you know. So a lot of things can happen, you know. And Unlimited Inc. has had times where we've had financial struggles. I know some people on this call and watching the replay will know that as well. I have no shame in saying that right at the downturn of the market, we had financial struggles. We've got it down, back to forty five day payments now, and everybody seems happy. But right at that downturn. All of our escrow officers, now we still have the clients, but a lot of the escrow officers got fired. So those files were open. People were moving around at the top of management, not too busy to look at all these other escrow officers files because they had all the files that needed to be closed piled on top of them. So we had to go back and like basically beg our clients, like, can you please look for these files? Here are the invoices. But it doesn't just work like, here's an invoice, pay me. They have to actually go look up that property file. Then they have to see if the escrow officer that was there before actually paid the file. Then they have to request their accounting department to pay, pay a file. Then it goes to a whole nother department. 
it's not as easy as a lot of times we would think like, oh, here's an invoice. Let me check my books. Here's a check. Doesn't work that way in title and escrow. Everything money is fiduciary companies are very tight on processes of money. So it does take time for money to move. Um, you know, be nice if they were all small mom and pop title companies, but a lot of them are not. So in short, a lot of things can happen. Um, sometimes patience is needed, but you know, like the company that I used as an example at the very beginning, uh, that was based out of Arizona. You know, I had a notary and I, I, you know, there's two sides to every story and then the truth, but I had a notary and I believed them. They were a notary star. She called me crying and she said, Hey, you know, I called and they said, if I call again, they were going to put my invoice on the bottom of the stack and I was never going to get paid. And that just broke my heart to hear that a signing agency would talk to a notary like that. Um, and then in, in Ms. Susan's case, you know, this is a large company that I've worked for, like I've worked for them and, you know, things happen, um, to continue on, on that art. I want to tell you, tell you guys about a story and I'm going to love to get to these hands here about, I'd say it was about seven or eight years ago. I was still out in the field and there was a signing agency owner and he was amazing he was a lot like me in fact i based a lot of unlimited ink off of working with them um, i have no problem in saying that his uh, company was named apex it's not the apex that you guys see online today um, but he was he would call me every morning and he is you know su southern as i would ever dream of being and and, and just how you doing ronnie you know i got four files for you today um, if I get one more, you know, there's one brewing. It was just very good old boy signing agency. And he would call every single morning and I would go out and do four or five signings for him a day. And he paid me one thirty a file, which was great. Okay. Great money seven years ago uh, and or seven or eight years ago. And one morning I didn't get that call and I had a question on doc. So I called him and I got a lady never talked to a lady there before and i was like you know what's going on and they just said please go out and do your files and make sure that they get shipped today and that's all they said and i knew something was wrong and the next morning an email went out to all of us that worked in all of his big markets and let us know that he passed away and you know you do 130 a file let's just say four signings a day 130 a file and he paid every 30 days that was a large amount of money on the table and my rent. And I had a lot of eggs in one basket with him. And I had to be patient. I borrowed money because um, back then I didn't have nearly what I have now. I borrowed money and I gave his wife and uh, the title company all the information that they needed. And it took about three months for me to be paid on all the files but they paid them. His wife said, I have no idea how he ran this business. You know, I will, I'll be working with his, you know, big client and full circle that title company actually uses unlimited ink sometimes. <laughs> um, and I didn't mean for that to happen, but I handled it very cool. And we stayed in touch and, and she put me in touch with his largest client at one point and they actually use us. Um, they're not a, a huge client like I have now, but it's it's nice to know that that patient relationship turned into to something. So sometimes that patience that I also say that we need to have will pay off for you in the long run. Yeah. Um, Miss Susan, you've had your hand raised patiently there. Yeah, I just wanted to mention one other thing. When you do file with the California Attorney General, they will reach out to that company and say, hey, we have received a complaint about you and you have to you know, say yes, that you're willing for them to reach out. So I want everyone to know that they will reach out to whatever company you are complaining about. And then that company hopefully will pay you, which I'm hoping to be paid, but I don't know. My file's from August of last year, so I'm not holding my breath anymore. <laughs> Yes, um, but let me tell you something. Um, so what will happen is, is if a, enough notaries go out and file complaints with the attorney general, um, it could stop them from being able to operate business in the state of California. And if they aren't able to operate business, it will force them into bankruptcy. 
and then it gets them out of the way and then it frees up that business for it to go to good signing agencies that will pay you or find out. And I'm sorry, but I've already had my rear end handed to me at one company before. If it were me, it would happen to me that way too. You know, there needs to be, and I put things in place every single day. You know, we update our contracts and how we operate Unlimited Inc. and what we're gonna do when we plan the future, but the best laid plans go astray. And, you know, again, if they're doing it on the up and up and they just have financial problems, if they come out and say, I'm sorry, I had another company, I can't remember the name of it. Um, It wasn't the one that you spoke about in Arizona, but this was, I believe, a company out of Ohio. And they owed me a substantial amount by the end of the year. I got a letter from them or an email and they said, hey, we are having financial difficulties. We will pay you if you need your money immediately. Please send it back, you know, and let us know. Well, I, you know, I didn't need my money immediately at that time. So I just, I thought, okay, I'm going to wait. So I waited about three months and then I sent them an email and I said, hey, can you pay me? And they did right away. Mm -hmm. If they're being compliant and honest, you got to give them a break because you're a small business owner too. And I, I said it during the level up conference, you will see everyone that you see on the way up that you will on the way down. So there is a a thing about making friendships in business as long as they are being good to you. And, you know, there, it is okay for them to say, I'm having financial trouble. Can I pay you in 30 days? You might not think that that's good, but every single person on this call has paid their bill late. You've paid your cell phone late. You paid your rent or mortgage late. You have paid something late because you were having financial trouble as an individual and those companies generally give you time to to do things the only thing is is a lot of those companies ding your credit score and that makes you want to pay so you should be able to do those same things for a company and that's what we're trying to put into place um but if they come back you know let's say you let's say you are really on hard times right and this has happened to me okay like 10 years ago um i fell on real hard times and i'll tell you i had a pretty little ford mustang that they were about to take away from me and I had to call the company and they said, well, since you called, we will do this, this, and this for you. And they wound up uh, getting me caught up on my payments and didn't affect my credit and got me back on track. And they said, well, since you called, and I thought I will only get a loan with you guys the rest of my life on a car because they just fixed it for me. And, you know, that's just one example, but I mean, Unfortunately, not always in our industry, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Um, uh, I'm going to move on to Miss Kelly's question, okay? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so back to 24-7. I just pulled a couple of my files. They did a massive amount of work for Stuart Title and Bank of America. Mm-hmm. Did Stuart Title get sold? I don't know if Stuart Tyler was sold. Um, I do know that, you know, we have Stuart Cl- Title clients and they're still open and operating. Um, I do know that Stuart Title also bought Signature Sync. So I don't know okay. if I, maybe, I mean, putting two and two together, uh, I know that they bought Signature Sync within the last two years. And then this problem with Notary, Notarized 247 seems to, to be popping up within the last two years. Putting two and two together, I'm wondering if, and this is just speculation, by the way, I'm wondering if the revenue pull over to Signature Sync um, hurt Notarized 247 to where they're not able to have a cash flow. It could be a cash flow issue. Um, Regardless, if you have files back to August 2022, in August 2022, if I'm not mistaken, that was the highest grossing month we've ever had at Unlimited Inc. There were no cash flow problems that month. No. Sure. Um, that was when it was raining signings. The cash flow problem came right after it was, it seemed like September, October, November, it just got scarier and scarier and scarier. Good news, guys, by the way. I talked to lots of clients today, this morning at Unlimited Inc. We have definitely seen an uptick climb. I don't know if you guys are experiencing it out there. 
I'd love to uh, hear from you guys about that, but we are seeing a lot more files at Unlimited Inc. A lot of our clients are creeping up with refis and uh, you know more purchases and more sales. Um, so we we are definitely seeing the uptick, and of course, Unlimited Inc. also brought in a ton of new clients throughout the country. Uh, so you guys are going to start seeing a lot more of us in areas that you've never seen us before. Um, but um, things are on the uphill climb and I've been watching this whole thing with uh, the Silicon Valley Bank. I don't think that's going to delay us anyway um, in getting back. My prediction has always been with the state of the industry, so to speak, is it's always gotten a little bit busier in March. March has been historically for Unlimited Inc. the last five years, a big pop, then it gets a little bit slower and then summer gets better and then end of year. So we're gonna go through that wave, but what I personally think is we're gonna steadily get busier because I don't think there'll be a drop. I think people have been waiting too a long time now to, to do refis and we're gonna start seeing people who need to do it now anyway, because what's gonna happen is they're gonna do it now and then they're gonna do it again in six months. When the interest rates drop so we're going to start seeing some of those refis because if you refi now it's april may june july august september you're really only going to pay six months of bad interest and you can refi again and a lot of people do that so we're going to start seeing people start to refi and then the you know there's been a lot of education coming out and i'm so proud of the realtors and the title agencies most predominantly the realtors on TikTok right now who are doing a lot of education for their clients of telling them when to buy and you know it's okay to buy and how this really works um i've never seen so much education come out of realtors and for if we have any realtors on here today um i i highly recommend that you get on TikTok and you you really research what they're saying and then make sure it's correct and then use it to educate your clients because i have learned so much off of the realtors. And I, I think we went through a panic mode in the entire industry when this happened, but I am confident to say, I feel like we're coming out of it. I don't feel like this is gonna be looming over us. And for those of you who want direct clients, now is the time, okay? Everybody's slow, they're, they're getting ready for that business, but they got time for you to walk in and shake a hand and leave a business card and and, and, and when they get busy again, that's the harder time for you to reach them. So you do really want to make sure that you, uh, if you're one of the ones that want direct business, start walking in the door yesterday, okay? If you need help with that, we got a marketing course to help you with that. Bill Soroka's got a marketing course to help you with that. Mark Wills has a, a marketing course. I don't care where you go if you need the help because there is business out there for everybody. It just takes, uh, you know, just takes one foot in front of the other. And Manuel Puga just did our rising star uh, uh, segment this, uh, this month. And he said it just like they said it level up. He said, you know, he stumbled over his words on his first time walking in and, and didn't really know what he was doing, but seven clients later in six months, he's doing great direct clients. And he never even thought that that was possible. Um, so now is the time, guys. Everybody who was gonna get fired has been fired. And here's what's gonna happen when it gets busy again, just so you know, this is true, okay? I personally have clients who would love to leave their job right now. They realized after everything fell apart that that's not the place they'd like to be, but it's scary to leave a job in title and escrow right now because you are not going to get a job. When it starts to, build up again, <clears throat> these title officers are going to move around again, okay? Or they're going to start jumping ship. You can get one office, and if they go across town and work in another office, you got the office that they were at, get everybody to like you there, and when one of them leaves and breaks off and goes somewhere else, if they like you, they'll take you with them, and you can have two offices. So now's the time, because that's how I grew in limited ink. I used to be so terrified if an escrow officer quit, now I'm just like, when are you going to quit? When are you going to find me another office? I look at my title and escrow officers like they're my sales team. Now I can't wait for one of them to quit. Not get fired. I don't want that to happen to anybody. I can't wait for them to quit because well, usually when they quit, they already found another job. So if you want direct business, now is the time.
get your resume, your business card, your best dress, and walk in the doors. Now, Shunda, I'd love to hear from you. Hey, I'm driving, but um. Oh wait, I'm no, my... no, ma'am. I love you. Okay. Okay, you yes, sir. We do not do driving and talking at the same time here. Okay. I love you, well, and I love chance. you so Somebody much. Somebody read it for me. I will. I'll take care of it, okay. Shonda. So okay. Okay, thank you. a question in the chat, Ronnie. She said, is there any way to advocate for myself when being blackmailed from a company because I stood up for myself? I submitted great files, went out of my way a few times, but got removed from some work because I would not break the law. I'm going to answer that really quickly first, Nashonda. If they're asking you to break the law and they removed you from their files orders because you wouldn't comply, you don't want to work for them anyway. Yep, this is absolutely true. Um, Nashonda, first of all, I have to say, and I want to say this for everybody, um, we love you so much that while you're driving, if you're in listen-only mode, we we want you to be camera off and stay on mute. There's nothing more important. This mentorship uh, should not be should be to change your life, not end your life. So we want you guys to be very safe when you're driving. And I will personally, if you called me and said, I was in mentorship, but I was driving, but I'm dying to know this, I will take the time. There's not a person out there that will tell you that I won't. Um, so uh, I want you to know that's why I said no, ma'am. But Getting to that question, I've had this happen to me in a roundabout way as well, and I will tell you, and I'll actually say who it was and what happened. So uh, back in my notary baby days, I worked for a company. It wasn't blackmail, but I want to explain to you why you should not take this personally. Back in my notary baby days, I went out, I, ha I worked for zone signings, which was Title 365, and this is fact not fiction, not fabricated at all. I was told, please be at the signing. And they were using me because I had a mobile printer and I printed the documents at the table with the signer. And, and, and I mean, they sent the documents late. I was on time and they said, you have to be here. He's really unruly. Um, he's, you know, he's in the military. He's been up all night. I got there, it was the nicest man I ever sat down with was, I mean, this nicest person. I printed the documents. He was like, oh man, you're like the real deal. And I said, yes. And I didn't tell him that they got them to me late. I just said, I love to, you know, always print and get everything nice and prepared. I'm going to print you a copy while we're signing. And we started signing immediately. And this is, I knew all the documents, but I did not back then start with the note and the deed like we kind of teach you to do now. And this is one of the reasons. I went through the package all the way to the note and realized that it was dated for the next day. So I called them and I said, you know, we're at the note and it looks like these are dated for the next day. And the lady on the phone like was so, why would you take this signer through an entire signing? Don't you know what you're doing? And she just went a little too far with me. So I actually just said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I have more education than you'll ever dream of having. But that is a different conversation, but I don't care who you think you are. You are not going to talk to me in front of your customer this way. I came here with a mobile printer because you got the documents late. I had no time to review these documents and that was it. <laughs> they alleviated me from the signing and all other signings and said I would never work with them again. And I did get a chance to have my piece. I had a three-way call with one of the higher ups and that woman apparently is one of the higher ups. And I said, hey, ma'am, I'm sorry, but where I come from, there's a word for women like you, but I'm too professional to say it. I don't wanna work with you anymore <laughs> and have a nice day. Um, you, there will be times where you are pushed beyond your limits. There will be times where you're asked to do thing, things that are illegal. That won't define you. And if they work with you that way and treat you that way, you don't want to work with them. Because they, if they ask you to do something illegal once, they're going to ask you to do something illegal again. It won't be one time. And if they mistreat you one time, they will mistreat you again. The beauty of owning your own notary business is you get to decide who you work with and how they treat you. You know, that's the beauty of working with it. We had an issue this weekend at Unlimited Ink Notary. The notary has done a hundred something files with us in, in, in Tucson. They 
the escrow officer forgot to upload a, a, the loan package. They went to the signing, which we all know you should, if it's a buyer's file, it should be there. He wanted more money. I had to think about it over the weekend. I said, I told the team, I said, have them send an email. We reviewed it and Travis and I decided together that we would give him the money, even though he should, because we needed to counsel him. We didn't just call him and pop off and be like, that's your fault. You should have looked and seen it was a buyer's or a refinance. We took into consideration what he went through. Travis and I actually do that at Unlimited. We look at each unique problem and say, what are they going through? You know, how valuable are they? What that what would that make you feel like if it happened to you? These companies that don't have that ability, you don't want to work with them to be honest. And did they stop me from becoming what I am today? No. And I don't look back now. I mean, I would, I would never look back on a company that would treat a notary the way that I was treated. And I, I, it's not stopped me from being successful. And Nashonda, that won't stop you from being successful either. Even if you were getting good business about them, let that light the fire inside of you to go out and get the business that you want and that you deserve. You know, don't worry about it, leave it in the dust and let that light your heart up to go out and find what you, a company that will not ask you to do something illegal. Now I know she's on mute, but- um, Okay, uh, they didn't know they were asking you to do something illegal. And sometimes guys, just cause their title and escrow doesn't mean that they know all of our laws and regulations that surround what we do. Um, and you have to understand it's kind of a psychological thing too. If you land blast them right off the bat and say, that's illegal, I can't do that. Now they're going to push back because they feel like they're being attacked or their authority is being questioned. So sometimes just approaching it from a softer angle, you might say, gosh, Brenda, I don't know if you know this or not, and um, but here's our regulation that says we really can't do this. Brenda might say, oh, wow, maybe the laws changed. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe they did. Who knows? But it's Ms. just all in how you present um, the issue that you're having with what their request is. Sometimes they just don't know and they just don't want you to challenge their perceived authority over you. Yep, and Miss Beth, I think the best way we can say that is fight your battles with the most polite education you can use. Use your education, use your Secretary of State's uh, uh, um, handbook that they put out for notaries. If you don't have one, use any law that you can find. Use the National Notary Association, use Notary Stars to back it up. Use the education that you have to combat your battles, but do it in a very polite way. Um, there's an old saying, and it stands true today, um, you catch more flies with honey. And uh, I'll say this uh, to end the session, but we'll also ask if there's any final questions. If you have a final question, please throw up that hand because we got about two minutes and I want to let you guys know about another situation. There is a signing agency that I know of in the Southwest. Um, uh, okay, they're out of Arizona. I don't want to sound like I'm always talking about Arizona, but these are close hitters and I, I know them very well. And I know that some signing agencies ask this. They actually have a client that requires the notaries to uh, fill out acknowledgements and jurats, two additional, to send with every order in case the notary made a mistake. 100,000% illegal and they will tell the notary, if you don't do it, you will not work with this company. And there are notaries still in Arizona working with that company because someone's desperate enough for the money. All it takes is one of those certificates to get attached to something you actually didn't notarize and guess who's in trouble? You are. Not the signing agency, not the title company. You are. And you can say all day long, well, they told me to, they said they needed it will not matter your certificate your attachment you have to control those and that's why they have optional information and that's why we say don't be lazy and fill that out never provide an additional certificate the only time i can see in miss beth you can correct me if i'm wrong that you might attach an additional certificate is when you run into a hybrid 
certificate, you're not able to reach the party, you may provide with the optional information filled out that it's attached to the same document, an acknowledgement and a jurat so that it's attached to that one document. But you don't leave them blank saying it's not attached to anything. I've had to do that in many instances with signings where we can't reach title, we can't ask who it is, and we don't know if the signer is going to make the right choice because ultimately underwriting is going to make the choice of which notarial act has to be attached. You know, that's the only instance I can foresee that you do that. A, a, a signing agency, and, and I'll tell you where that comes from. It's not the signing agency owner that wants that. They're enforcing something because they're so desperate for clients that they will do anything an escrow officer asks them, including ask a notary to do something illegal. So you have to wonder how much power do I have if I won't do something that is 100% illegal, because how far could they really take it? You know, how far could they really take it if they don't have notaries that won't break the law? So you want to you want to make sure that just choose not to work with a company and unlimited ink we if it is illegal and laws vary from state to state, by the way. At unlimited ink we really won't we'll go back against our clients we do it with polite education. Um, but we'll go back against our clients and we will say this can't be done, this has to be done uh, a certain way Miss Beth you got something to add on on that. You opened a can of worms. So um, hybrid certificates, um, put a two in the chat if you guys don't know what a hybrid certificate is. If you do not know what a hybrid certificate is. I, okay. I guess I, I did because there's a lot of, lot of things in there. Um, so a hybrid certificate is, um, we all know that we have... Um, acknowledgements and we have jurats and those two certificates do specific things and they have specific wording that has to be in those certificates title and escrow or the lender or the attorneys whoever's putting together these documents have in the last three to five years um, kind of gone toward a hybrid certificate where they are marrying <clears throat> the words that distinguish a jurat from an acknowledgement and putting them all in the same certificate. A lot of states do not have regulations regarding hybrids. And even that term, if you're looking in your manuals, you may not find it because it's not a um, notarial law creation. It's something that was created by the industry, okay? A lot of states cannot, notaries are not authorized to do hybrid certificates. So knowing that they've combined an acknowledgement and a jurat, and Ronnie says it's in a hybrid certificate, you can't get a hold of the title company to say, hey, I can't do this type of certificate. Which would you prefer, an acknowledgement or a jurat? Because again, the second question is, um, which one do you want? Because I can't choose, right? If you're in a bind and you can't define um, by making that phone call what certificate they want, we are telling you to do both. Attach an acknowledgement and a jurat. Disable the certificate on the document that you can't use. Attach an acknowledgement and a jurat. Make sure that optional information at the bottom of that loose certificate is there so that it clearly defines what document it goes to. Okay. Miss Beth, I also put into the chat for everybody. Um, this is actually um, um, from Notary Public 101. It's a part of our free training at Notary Stars. Uh, it's the very first video. It's also part of module one for the, the members, um, but everybody has access to, let me make sure I do it from both. I did it. The first one I put in was for members. This one is actually, that module is actually open to everybody. Um, let's see, members training. I'm just going to put that link in there uh, for everybody as well, in case you are not a member. Um, we have a, let's see. Okay, and I'm going to put it here as well. The very first video on either one of these pages, this one is for non members. We feel very passionately that notaries should know how to fill out their certificate. So the first link is for members, the second link is for non members, and I'll put that into the video for the replays as well. Um, if you click it from a YouTube channel, just remember that you have to be logged into your um, Notary Stars 
when you click through. Um, but I'll, uh, we have a whole video training on that uh, that I just, I just wanted to make sure we put it, uh, put that in there uh, so that you know what those are. And I wanted to say this one little point too, because I think uh, if Laura's here, uh, Laura Bewer, if you happen to be here, raise your hand or something, because that would be something that I feel like I'm borrowing words from Laura Bewer at this point. And Miss Beth, you can correct me, but I believe I've heard Miss Laura say before um, that just because it isn't in your not notary handbook doesn't mean that it's okay. So we really should be looking at our notary handbooks and saying, what notarial acts does it say I can do? Which is, you know, acknowledgement or direct. If it doesn't say anything about a hybrid certificate or have that language, you can't do it. Just be like, we should use that as a compass. And I think that's where a lot of notaries go wrong. They think, well, they gave me the certificate. It is your duty to make sure you can complete that certificate and you need to know your notary handbook. So, um, listen, your own attorney general for your state has bad habits and the federal government have bad habits of making certificates that are not compliant for us in state. So we have to always, always scrutinize those certificates. Yep. Guys, I didn't see any other hands go up today. Uh, I know I took up the first part of the session to kind of talk about uh, bad signing agencies, but there will be an article posted later. I'll post it into, it's going to go into our blog section and go into our Facebook group. If you're not a part of our Facebook group, it's also a very safe place to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you if you don't mind turning on your cameras and let's do our signature wave because I, this is the highlight of my day on any day when I get to see y'all's pretty faces and we get to wave to each other because it is very lonely at this desk sometimes so I, I love seeing you guys' faces so if you are not naked or you're not stuffing your face with a sandwich right now, please turn on those cameras and wave to someone else on the screen. Wave to yourself if you're watching the replay, which wave to those who missed the general mentorship today. Wave to those future notaries that'll be learning from this. And Miss Beth, how do we say it? Well, this time we're going to let you know that being successful doesn't make you great. What makes you great is when you can reach back and help somebody else become great. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening.